Uh, my name is Matt Pinsker, I'm a professor here at Dickinson, and I'm head of uh, something called the House Pilot Project, which we're going to describe to you kind of briefly here, it's something new, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about our plans for the coming 150th anniversary of the Civil War era. But we've begun by doing a lot of work on the Underground Railroad, which is why I'm here to, you know, to talk to you this morning. So uh, it's an interesting project, uh, and it involves an awful lot of digital resources aimed at K-12 classrooms. Particular focus parts. And so when you're looking at our kind of operatives and battle sites, like the McClintock Ride in 1847, if we zoom in on this with Google Earth, we've set up these scores now so that um, we can see a three dimensional model of uh, the courthouse on Google Earth. Now, it's not going to show you the full color version of it right now because of a, a glitch in the SketchUp installation here. It's one of the problems with technology, right? You don't get everything aligned perfectly. It's not going to look perfect. But you can begin to see what, what's going to happen. This is Google Earth. We've created a three-dimensional model of the Carlisle Courthouse. There's a picture of it. Uh, when that's set up properly, this is all free, right? So, you know, teachers can show this in the classroom. You'll see a full color version of that, and you can pan around, even go inside if Google SketchUp and see inside. If you, that's what it looks like if you have done properly, right? Right on Google Earth. You can pan around, do a real field trip like that. And as you talk about that, uh, you can show students all kinds of resources through the digital world that just are easier and more accessible. Like if we go back to Google Earth, when we go back to the Carlisle Courthouse site, click on the link there to show the text and documents. Now this is a brief description of what happened here. Fugitive slave ride in 1847, a picture, and then there's a document, and then there are more primary sources. All of those are the sources that we have stored at the House Divided site, and this is one of those stories that was so powerful. Because remember that guy, Montgomery Conway? He was a 16 year old student here when these slaves from Maryland were uh, recaptured and then tried in the courthouse. And this Dickinson professor, not that guy I showed you from the picture over here, but another one. Dickinson professors are always getting in the middle of these things, right? This guy, John McClintock, he, uh, he uh, showed up at the courthouse and informed the judge that he had the law wrong. And in the state of Pennsylvania, they had something called a personal liberty law that had just been passed that made it um, the process of remanding or returning these fugitive slaves to Maryland uh, illegal and that they had to be released. And the judge ignored him or tried to, but uh, in the process, McClintock got him to agree to recess the case briefly, and he went back to his apartment to try to get a copy of the law, which had been printed in the newspaper. While he was busy doing that, the local blacks and whites in Carlisle, who were part of the Underground Railroad Abolitionist Network, they rioted at the courthouse and freed the slaves. And then, uh, in the mail, the slave representative from the master in Maryland was here, a guy named Kennedy, young man with two little kids. He got a uh, tramp and uh, he was injured and then three weeks later died from his injuries. And, you know, there's, I'm, I'm not completely certain of this, but I believe, uh, and I've done a lot of research on this, I believe this is the first time that a southerner was killed in the north trying to recapture his future slaves. Now there are other examples of this tour. Um, we jump from Carlisle to Christiana. This is, yeah, this is the Google Earth effect. Watch this, right? We're zooming from Carlisle uh, over here to Lancaster. And now we're gonna, let's, well, let's uh, start with the marker, okay, from the PHMC marker. Now, if you go to Christiana, right, there is no, um, uh, there is really nothing more than the PHMC marker here, which they put up in 1998, uh, which, commemorates the Christiana riot. That actually occurred after the 1850 Fugitive Slave Law, uh, which was also striking because in this case, the Maryland slaveholder who came to get his fugitives there were four runaways in 1851, his name is Edward Gorsuch. He actually got killed on the spot. He was murdered. And then in both cases, by the way, the McClintock riot and the uh, uh, Christiana riot, the people who were accused of masterminding conspiracy or committing the murder, uh, they were either acquitted or released on appeal. In the McClintock case, all the white people involved got acquitted right up front. The black people, about a dozen of them, were put in prison and sentenced to hard labor for a series of years, but on appeal, their, their convictions thrown out. 
and they were all released after a <coughs> In the Christianic case, they rounded up whites and blacks, and they put the first white guy on trial, uh, a man they thought was a Quaker, it turned out he wasn't. You know, that's how they were making these connections. He was acquitted in 15 minutes by a federal jury in Philadelphia. So you can imagine what Southerners are thinking, right? There are fugitive slaves who are escaping, being helped by Northerners, both white and black. <coughs> then when Southern slave catchers come across the border to go get them, they are attacked. <coughs> and then people who attack them never face any repercussions for it. They're not brought to justice in the eyes of the Southerners. These are devastating moments in the sectional polarization of the country. They're incredibly important in the coming of the Civil War. And they all are happening right here in places like Cumberland County, Dauphin County, York County, Lancaster County. There's a series of these resistance efforts. Um, you know, it's interesting that you say that because growing up in Mississippi, the way that you're telling the story, I, 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 I learned um, Underground Railroad from this type of perspective, from the Southerners' perspective. Right. And basically, it's this escalation of the North, particularly breaking the law. You know, right. especially after the Fugitive Slave Act was passed, they were breaking the law, and then they were trying to incite, you know, um, against Southern uh, economics. And it's very interesting, and if you want to believe, a lot of these stories still play off today in how people sort of see, um, so how some Southerners see the South. I know you're going to make this loop later on, but that is also why it's incredibly risky for U.S. coming troops, Northern freemen, right. to go South right. uh, during the five years of the war. Well, the three years that they were allowed to serve, 63 to 65. Right. This concept of freemen who worked themselves further north, reversing and going south, is against this landscape that the abolitionists have put in but place. It, it, it is, it's, there is a fundamental difference, a shift in power once you cross the next place in either direction. That, uh, it works both ways, I hope you understand that. What Christianity shows, we can go over to the Rye House. So the marker is all the <coughs> right now. Because if you see where the marker is, it's right near that lower valley road in Christiana. How, how many of you have ever been there? Okay, now this is one of the fundamental battlegrounds in coming to the Civil War. It, it should be, in my opinion, a national park. But in any event, right now it's a private property, it's a farm. And that PHMC marker is as good as we can do because the place is about, you know, a mile, <coughs> about a half a mile from where the marker is, where the riot took place, where Gorsuch was killed. If we could uh, show the riot house in SketchUp. So we've now, you know, created the um, mm. the reconstruction of the riot house, which doesn't exist anymore. The PHMC has recovered the foundations of it using GIS, and they can show you where it was in a map, and we can show uh, also aerial photographs where it was. But uh, we've taken photographs from the 19th century and created a three-dimensional version. You can see there's a guy in the doorway there that was in one of the um, that's what it looked like where a guy named William Parker, who was a former runaway slave uh, himself, and a friend of Frederick Douglass's, he, he uh, kept those runaway slaves in his house in Southern Christiana, and they fought back, and when Gorsuch and the federal posse of slave marshals came to the door, they fought back, killed Gorsuch, and then fled. Uh, Parker escaped for good, and it was, you know, a striking moment in the coming of the Civil War that uh, illustrates an awful lot about how dangerous it was for Southerners, North of the Mexican Civil See, it's dangerous for colored troops and blacks and white abolitionists to go south, but what people tend to forget is it's also dangerous for whites to come north if they're looking to recapture their slaves. They didn't always get attacked, but they often did. And in fact, when, when Gorsuch was planning to come up here, he had a spy in Lancaster County. I'm not going to show you this document right now, but on our website, we have a letter from his spot, uh, which, which has appeared in different books about Christiana, where his spot warned him to come as a hunter disguised if he was going to want to recapture these slaves. Well, why would he tell him to come as a hunter disguised unless he knew that he was in danger?